Hey, what's up guys? Dan here bringing you my first review. Um, this is a review of Quantum Conundrum, and I'm going to explain to you how this review is going to go down. Uh, I broke what I wanted to, like, what I wanted to cover in the five categories. And I don't, I'm not going to sum them up, I'm not going to give it a number rating, but if, you should just probably sit back, watch, and if it looks like the kind of game you want to play, then go out and buy it. I'm going to go over positives and the few slim negatives. But yeah, let's jump right into this with, uh, presentation. Okay, so this game runs on Unreal 3. It has a clean menu design, a blueprint kind of style, and it's only single player. It doesn't have many modes. But yeah. Uh, now into the gameplay. The gameplay... It's a first-person puzzle solver. It's similar to Portal. It was co it's like co-produced by Portal creative director Kim Swift. Was that was what it is? And uh, basically, you do a lot of dimension shifting puzzles. There's five dimensions: normal, fluffy, heavy, uh, slow time, and reverse gravity. And that is basically what you'll be doing all throughout the puzzle, all, all throughout the game. Using these, combining them, switching between them. Well, you can't, like, combine them in real time, but combining the effects. So say you lift up a safe, and then you throw something, slow time, and then jump onto that safe using uh, anti-gravity, fluffy, and slow time. And then you use anti-gravity, get over, like, to carry what you just threw to get to some to the place that you need to go. So that's what you're going to be doing a lot in this game. I mean, that's not just the only puzzle that happens. There's a lot of puzzles. There's over, like, 50, I think there are. And they're very fun. And, yeah. There's going to be a lot of platforming and physics puzzles. But all your dimensions help you with that because it bends the physics. It bends the platform. It allows you to platform. And that's really good for this game. Okay, and into the graphics, like I said, this game runs on Unreal Engine 3. It looks very good, very stylized, and it just has a general, like, good look to the graphics. My one friend says it pushes the limits of Unreal 3. I don't think that's the case, because I'm not sure if I remember correctly, but Gears of War 3 runs on Unreal Engine 3, and that game looks amazing. And that game also doesn't have textures that sometimes fade in during play, like uh, Quantum Conundrum. That happens to be a problem with Quantum Conundrum is that sometimes textures still load while you play and switching between dimensions can cause them to reload sometimes but it's not that bad. The game is still highly playable and it's like usually on a small number of things. It's not even on the majority of the environment like Gears of War 2 where you could just like walk in a room and all the textures would have to fade in for everything. But yeah, the graphics are very very nice. And now on to the sound. There is some fantastic voice acting by the actor who plays Professor Quadrangle. He is basically the only person you hear during the game. You don't hear yourself, you don't hear, uh, well you do hear Ike, but Ike isn't actually voiced by anything, uh, according to the end game credits. And there is a lot of nice music in this game, but it's largely forgettable. It does play a nice backdrop to you solving puzzles. It's not distracting, it's not too loud. It's, it lets you think, which is what you need to do when you play this game. Because a lot of the time, you'll just keep trying and keep trying this one thing, and then you'll figure out what it is, and you'll just be like, oh, That was really stupid of me. How did I not see that before? But the credit song for when you actually beat the game, that is fantastic. I really do enjoy that song. It might not be your taste. But it is a really nice song that they got for the credits. And finally, I want to cover replay value. There's The game is only single player, so that limits the amount of replay value. But when you go into the level select and view all the levels, like, they give you certain goals. Like time trials. They give you a certain amount of time 
for which they want you to beat the stage in, or beat levels without dying. There's achievements for both of these. And there's also, like, shift limits, like, a limit to how many times you can shift dimensions to solve the puzzles. And that's, I, I like that, how they added all that. And there's leaderboards, so you can compare times and shift limits and who's the best and blah, 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 blah. And there's also collectibles, which you find throughout the levels, usually through using your dimensional shifting powers to find the uh, stuff. And last but not least... Uh, like I said, the game was designed by Portal's co-creative producer, whatever, Kim Swift. It's only 1,200 Microsoft points on Xbox Live or $15 on Steam or PSN. And I highly recommend this game. I had a lot of fun with it. And I'm still going back right now to play it. And I'm, like, I've beaten it two days ago, I'm pretty sure. And I'm still going back and playing it, like, the end level. Which isn't even that hard or amazing, but for some reason I just like it. And that's a good thing, when a game just doesn't amaze you and make you remember it, but you just, you just like it, and you remember it for that reason. So, that concludes my review. I'll talk to you guys next time.